Good morning and welcome to another Daily Dose of God Time. So glad you could join today as we're looking at the life of the Apostle Paul, material taken from Chuck Swindoll's incredible work, Great Days with the Great Lives. Um, I know it's hard. I know there are some of you out there right now that are suffering. Some of you are suffering because of COVID. Some of you are suffering uh, because of the secondary effect effects of it, both um, financially, uh, maybe relationally. Um, some of you are just sitting in a place right now and you're thinking, God, what's the purpose of this pain? Well, the Apostle Paul knew his share of pain. Matter of fact, it was part of his calling when Jesus said that he'd have to suffer greatly for his name. But, but, but Paul wrote one time about that groaning, right, about about the longing that we all have in the midst of pain. Writing to the Romans from a prison cell, he said, for we know in Romans 8, 22 and 23, for we know that the whole creation has been groaning together with labor pains until now. And not only that, but we ourselves who have the spirit as the first fruits, we also groan within ourselves eagerly awaiting for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. Any study of the life of the Apostle Paul requires a serious look at the subject of pain. Suffering is not a pleasant subject to explore. Explaining Paul's words to the Romans, I love what John Stott writes. It's not only our fragile body which makes me groan, it is also our fallen nature which hinders us from behaving as we should. Our groans express both our present pain and our future longing. Some Christians, however, grin too much. They seem to have no place in their theology for pain, and they groan too little. Talking of Paul, the, the man has grown weary of the perpetual Christian grin. Frankly, I'm with you. <laughs> if you groan and allow your countenance to reflect any measure of inner turmoil, people frown at you judgmentally, as if to suggest you're not walking in the Spirit. Don't get me wrong. I find nothing offensive about Christian laughing. Matter of fact, if you ask me, I, I prefer it. Laughter demonstrates authenticity in our lives. I simply believe there's no need to glue a permanent Cheshire grin, though, to our faces, lest we look like we're not living a victorious Christian life. You know, if we're afraid of the image we put out there. If a fellow believer tells you he's going through a particularly tough time, don't insist he smile. Um, don't urge people to sing along with you on some tune that you think they should be singing. Sometimes we just don't feel like singing or smiling. After all, God gave us more than one emotion on purpose. My desire is to help equip you for what life inevitably will sling across your path. You may be bearing a burden or a heartache the likes of which... I've never known. You may be living with pressures or some debilitating physical disease or emotional pain I can't even begin to imagine. After 35 years of pastoral ministry, you know, um, I've seen many evidences of inner turmoil on the face of God's kids. In those times, um, I like what Chuck Swindoll writes. He says, when I, when I feel at loss to offer encouragement, I'm most thankful for the scriptures. In God's word, we not only find God's will for our lives, we find words of genuine comfort for those times when life becomes unglued. For Paul, it would come unglued many times. There was attempts on his life many times. He was shipwrecked. He was beaten. He was imprisoned. He was stoned. I guess I should be somewhat ashamed that my preaching has never evoked such quiet emotions so strongly. But who's to say that day's not coming? May we learn from the Apostle Paul that we live our lives genuinely in front of others. But our groan isn't just a groan for our present situation. Our groan is also of a future longing toward which all of creation moves, that glorious second coming of the Lord Jesus. Let me pray for you this morning.
Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for my friends who might be going through some suffering of their own, whether they're stuck in a rest home or in a hospital room or whether uh, they're having trouble getting a checkbook to balance or um, whatever it might be. Relationally, Father, I pray that uh, if they're going through that, it might be a, there might be some encouragement in there that they would look to your word. But God, I also pray for your Holy Spirit that was sent to us as comforter. I pray, Lord, your comforter would come alongside us and apply that which uh, only you can apply bringing resolution to that which only you can resolve. This I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I sure pray you have an incredible day, that you love God, love one another, and by all means, this world desperately needs you to go be salt and light. Have an incredible day.